the only two people who are called devils in Japanese history is Oro Nobunaga and Yamagate Shuhiro, so you can understand how strong he was. He proved that being actual strength is not about going up and killing anyone. There was one person that came to my mind when one person showed up and stopped a war from happening. Shanks from One Piece. Yeah, I'm here to stop this war. Let's start from number one. Obviously, obviously he was unbelievably strong. He was really, really strong. Even when he was growing up, when he was a teenager growing up, growing up learning a lot of the martial arts in his family, he was called Onitetsu. That was his nickname. Onitetsu literally means devil metal. Yeah. <laughs> so scary. Yeah, because his name has Tetsu in it, right, in the first place, right? So devil metal. The only two people who were called devils in Japanese history is Oro Nobunaga and Yamagate Shuhiro, so you can understand how strong he was. Every dojo, every train he went to, went to Yamagate was so strong he would defeat everyone immediately. He was called a devil. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to have a 188 centimeter person weighing more than 100 kilo born in a martial art family standing in front of me. I'm going to be saying, sorry, I'm leaving <laughs> right away. Yeah, so you can understand he was really, really strong. Yeah, and what's... That though I wanted to tell you guys what's even more amazing about Yamagate is not just his strength in fighting in martial arts or doing kendo and stuff like that. No, what's amazing about him, this is the point that I admire him so much, the most, is because he did not kill anyone in his life. Yeah. Of course, yeah, no one knows the real history. Maybe he had hurt, killed someone before, yeah. But a lot of um, theories say that Yamagate did not hurt or kill anyone through his whole life. It was during, it was not during the peaceful Edo period. Again, this was during the Bakumatsu period when there was literally wars and terrorism happening all over the country Everyone and he was fighting for people. the shogunate, protecting to fight the shogunate. He didn't kill anyone. He had real strength. Now we always say when us like us Budo trainees, we always say that Budo is meant for training so you become strong enough so you don't have to fight. That doesn't sound, you know, that sounds like a contradiction, right? You're, you're lear learning fighting skills so you don't have to fight doesn't make that much sense, right? Like, that sounds like a contradiction, but Yamaoka Tishu, by actually not killing anyone, even though he was one of the strongest people in martial arts, he actually lived through this, this principle, this philosophy. He proved that being actual strength is not about going up and killing anyone. Remember Shin Sengumi members, how many people did they kill? <laughs> you know, as a police organization in Kyoto, like the Ikira incident, they killed tons of people. Yamako Teshi was in those battlefields too. Like all those major battlefields, he was there, but he didn't have to kill anyone because he was truly strong. This is the strength that all Budo trainees want to get to. This is the goal for us, right? And he actually lived by it. So this is the part that I just love about Yamakote Shu so much. He is the man of true strength. Now, the, the, this is just the part that I love so much. And for a long time, I really didn't understand what it meant to, be, to train in fighting skills so you don't have to fight. But understanding the history and life of Yamakote Shu, everything completely dissolved inside me and everything made sense learning about him. So number one is already the, one of the favorite parts of my Yamakote Shu. This is really, really amazing. Yeah. But let's keep on going though, we still have number two as well. He led the bloodless surrender to a success. Now I already talked a lot about this through the history of his life, but this is really amazing. One person, almost basically his one person stopped a whole war from starting. There was one person that came to my mind when one person showed up and stopped a war from happening. Shanks from One Piece. Yeah, I'm here to stop this war. No, literally, that's what Yamaka Teshu did. Seriously, he, one person came up to the main leader directly and said, let's stop this war from happening. We are gonna be surrendering. And the leader accepted that. That's exactly like the Shanks, what he did at the, the major war One Piece story, right? I'm really sorry if you're not a One Piece fan. Please don't leave me. The video is gonna be continuing, hold on. Yeah, but this is amazing. A person like him actually existed. So this is just, Really, really amazing. Also, there's a really famous um, saying that Saigo Takamori left. Yeah. It's written here, people who don't want money, honor, or life are hard to deal with. So Saigo Takamori was, was talking with Yamagate Shu, he realized, looking deeply into his eyes, he noticed, this man literally doesn't want anything. 
he is moving his actions, you know, his motivation is pure loyalty. Yeah. He doesn't want, he doesn't want money, he doesn't want honor for himself, he doesn't even want his own life, he doesn't even you know, need his own life. Like, okay, this person is impossible to manipulate or move, you know. And that's the reason why Saigo Takamori was completely impressed by Yamukote Shu, right? I think this is like the best word you can say to someone, <laughs> and especially as a samurai living by Bushido, this is like the best compliment you can ever receive, I think. Yeah. And again, Saigo Takamori, what he said about honor was true too, because Saigo, uh, Yamukote Shu, he didn't even receive the credit for the bloodless surrender. Now, I think many Japanese people too who study about Japanese history but don't know about Yamako Tishu would say, wait, Shogo, no, 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 the Edo no Mukitsu Kaijo, the bloodless surrender of the Edo castle, no, it was done by Saigo Takamori and Katsukaishu, Katsukaishu, which was one of the, um, the bosses, I guess, superiors of Yamako Tishu and also Sakamoto Ryoma too, if you remember when I talked about his story. Yeah. Um, in the end, in the end, Saigo Takamori, after he talked with Yamako Tishu, he goes to the Edo castle and he talks to Katsukaishu, which was the leader of Yamako Tishu. Mm -hmm. And then there was officially decided that they, were, they would not be doing any wars and they would surrender without any battles. Mm -hmm. So in the end, it was Katsukaishu who basically made, you know, made a contract basically with the leader, two leaders talking with each other. Mm -hmm. But without Yamako Tishu, Saigo Tamori would have come to the castle still willing to fight, right? Yeah. So the history would have been completely different and Yamako Tishu did not say anything about it. He said, no, it was Katsukaishu san, my, my boss who did it. I did not do anything. He didn't say anything, did not take any credit for making this a success. So Saigo Takamori, when he said this person doesn't want any honor, he was correct. He was correct. What about Yamako Tishu? So I thought this is really, really amazing too. How much loyalty he had to the shogunate and also to his boss Katsukaishu. And then going down here, three, he started his Ryuha and died sitting in Zazen. I think this is really, really amazing too. And I have a really favorite story about Yamako Tishu and his um, sensei in Kenjutsu in sword techniques called, here we go, Asari Yoshiaki. He was a, the fourth headmaster of Nakanishi Ha Ito Itoryu. Yeah, Nakanishi Ha Itoryu. And although, again, he was called Onitetsu, he was really, really strong, but there was just one person that Yamako Tishu could never defeat. No matter how many times he tried, he was not able to defeat just one person, and that was Asari Yoshiaki of Nakanishi Itoryu. Yeah. He was really, really strong. And he challenged him through his whole life. Even when he, su he succeeded in doing the bloodless surrender of the Edo castle, he still wasn't able to defeat Asari Yoshiaki. Mm -hmm. But after making this a success, after working for the, the Meiji Emperor, and still training in Zazen, you know, training in Zen, making him mentally strong, physically strong, and he was continuing to still lose against his master, he, he wasn't even able to hit, get even one hit for his whole life almost. Mm -hmm. But one day, one day everything came together. And no one of course knows, yeah, he, what, he reached um, enlightenment. It said, yeah. And of course, enlightenment is something that only that person can understand, right? And one day, Yamako Teshu went to his master, Asari Yoshiaki, and said, Sensei, it would be great if you can fight with me today, too. And they had their swords in front of each other, of course. And then the Sensei, without fighting, he put down his sword and said, I've lost. He said, I've lost. Even though he'd never got hit by his, his student before, he, when, when he saw Yamako Tishu with his sword on that day, he said he put down his sword without even fighting. He said, I'm the one who lost. Mairimashita, is what he said. And then he gave permission to Yamako Tishu to start his own Ryuha, and that's the reason why his Ryuha has Ito Seren in it. Ito Seren was the name that he got permission from his master that he couldn't defeat almost through his, through his whole life. That was the name he, he gave permission to, and Mutoryu is the name that Yamako Tishu gave to his own Ryuha. Yeah, I just love this story so much. It sounds like a manga, doesn't it? Yeah, but I guess people in that level of sword skills, just by putting their swords together, they can immediately realize. I think if you train in kendo, or even judo, karate, it could be anything, but the moment you stand in front of that person, you can understand, okay, I'm probably not going to be winning, you know? You probably can understand that, but even at a higher level, yeah, the sensei was like, okay, you now have the right to carry on the name that I'm going to be giving you. Mm -hmm. And this is how he started his own Ryuha. And again, Mutoryu means no sword style. 
Just like Yamamoto Teshu did not kill anyone throughout his life, the purpose of this duha, although the training is believed to be one of the strictest, most hard training that they have to fight through, I actually have a, I found a video on YouTube where they show some of the kata, the movements inside the mutoryu, so you can take a look, it's inside the description box. But it's really, really hard training, but the purpose, again, is to let go of your swords, to not have any weapons to not fight is the ultimate goal. And that's the meaning, the principle he gave to this Mutoryu name. So I think that is really, really beautiful too. Yeah. So he literally dedicated his whole life to training because he died sitting zazen. Even to the very last moment of his life, he continued to train Zen facing towards the Imperial Palace. <laughs> it's like, this all sounds fiction, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But he actually had cancer and he knew that he was going to die. Yeah. So every day when he felt he was going to die, so he sat down doing zazen. Yeah. He was, moment, he was waiting for his moment to die. Mm -hmm. And it's just really amazing. I've never heard of anyone else, you know, in such close in history, you know, to modern today that actually died sitting zazen before. So I think it's just really, really amazing. So that is really amazing too. And number four, even after he died, it was really amazing too. The emperor stopped the funeral procession. Yeah. So basically at his funeral, Yamagoto Teshu was died and there was a huge parade almost like, you know, carrying his corpse, you know, to the graveyard, to the temple. It was uh, done by the temple that he built by himself, by the way. Mm -hmm. And they walked through the cities, you know, everyone was mourning his, you know, his death, you know, everyone was very crying and sad, you know, 5,000 people took part in the funeral. Mm -hmm. And the emperor himself asked the prey to stop for 10 minutes in front of the imperial palace so that he can mourn his soul for him. The emperor of Japan or anywhere, it could be a king or a queen, or it could be anywhere, but the king or queen, you know, or the emperor in this case, stopping a funeral, you know, the procedures just for one person who was originally born from a poor family that is just really amazing. He stopped for 10 minutes and the emperor was watching down at the parade for 10 minutes and he asked to stop. Yeah. That's how much respect the emperor had towards the Yamagata Shu as well. Mm -hmm. So I really think that's amazing as well. Just for a commoner, he stopped the whole parade so he can mourn his soul. And 5,000 people, 5,000 people coming to mourn his soul, I think is really amazing. Yeah. And of course, there were a lot of subordinates who were fighting for him, learning uh, martial arts under him, but he actually, affect, his source skills, his mindsets really affected modern kendo too. Mm -hmm. A lot of people still respect Yamaoka Teshu. They sometimes hold competitions under the name of Yamaoka Teshu too. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why there's so many, many people respecting him. Yeah. And it's, I didn't include it here, but it was actually a little bit sad that some people actually died along with him. There's some people who died next to his grave saying that we cannot con continue to live in a world without Yamako Teshu Sensei. Yeah. So that is how much respect that he had gathered throughout his life. And that is how much respect that he gathered from me too. <laughs> Absolutely. So these are the four things that I thought was amazing about Yamako Teshu. So that's it for today there, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this video. It was really, really fun talking about Yamako Teshu. Yeah. And what's great, uh, as I was saying um, before we started this filming, was saying with Kazuma and, and the uh, channel members, is that Yamako Teshu, you don't know about him, right? Although he changed history and moved history so much, no one knows about him. And that's another amazing part, I think. Yeah, it's because he didn't go around and say, that I did this, you know, everyone watch, look at all of the achievements I did, you know. Praise me, praise, praise me. me. <laughs> go around and, you know, <laughs> passing up brochures about his life, right? Yeah, and that I think is another really amazing part. And all of, of course, he has written, there is a book about Yamaoka Teshu's Bushido. Yeah, Yamaoka Teshu's Bushido, his own Bushido philosophy is actually left in a book. The book that I've read to study about him was written by some other person that was not written by his own self. Yeah. And I really just think that Yamaoka Teshu is seriously amazing. He is the person who lived through a real Bushido. Yeah. Not just the loyalty, you know, not just the loyalty that we often talk about, but the fact that he didn't even kill anyone. And he established such an amazing Yuha style and affected Kendo martial arts, Budo martial arts today. I think the achievements he made is really amazing. I mean, like we often say that the Shin Sengumi 47 Ronin are the people of loyalty too, but you know, think of all the people that they had to kill, 
you know, and end their lives. Even the uh, 47 Ronin might have killed a lot of the guards at the Kira mansion. They killed Kira himself, mm -hmm. but Yamagate didn't even have to do that. He was on his own, you know, and he changed Japanese history. So I think it's really amazing. I hope you are now in love with Yamako Teshu as much as I am. Um, to be honest, if you already know about Yamako Teshu, I'm pretty sure you're thinking, Shogo, sure, why did you leave out that episode? Did that episode you should have introduced to? There's a lot of other great things that he did as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested, it'd be great if you can study even more about Yamako Teshu. And again, please let me know in the comments about your favorite samurai and the favorite episode of that samurai too. Okay, there everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video as well. Our goal, by the way, is to achieve 2 million subscribers by January 2023 here on this main channel. So it'd be great if you can give us likes and comments. It'll help to boost our videos to new viewers that have never seen our channel before. So we really, really need your help. Thank you so much, guys. And we'll see you in our next Shogo's Classroom. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.